We're on me. Mm. Hello, everybody. It's Lauren from Hot for Food. I'm back with a brand new video here. It's been a while. I'm feeling a little bit strange. But anyway, I've got some fun recipes for you today. Very summery, uh, very exciting actually, because I've just launched a brand new uh, thing. It's called Eat It by Hot For Food. It is my own membership platform, my own subscription to get all of my amazing content. So I've been on YouTube since 2014, 2015, it's been a long time. I'm very thankful for all of y'all here for subscribing, for supporting, for watching, for buying my two cookbooks and all of these things. But it has come time for me to spread my wings and grow and fly the YouTube nest just a little bit. I'm still gonna be here occasionally every month to give you some content, but really what I would love for you to do is come over to members.hotforfoodblog.com. The link is below. So go on over, click on over, get the details. Uh, the best bang for your buck is the annual membership and that means you're gonna get four uh, recipe bundle releases in one year. Uh, so I'll release a bunch of recipes every quarter. And if you're an annual member, you'll get all of that content, plus another bonus video of me making something from the bundle. Uh, these quarterly issues will be seasonal or themed or something. I don't really know, but I have lots of ideas that I wanna share with you. And if you're an annual member to eat it, you'll also get lots of other perks, like you'll be added to my IG close friends list, You'll also get access to Hot For Food approved discounts on some of my favorite products, as well as quarterly uh, giveaways. I'm gonna have lots of giveaways from all of our supporters. So you only get that if you pay for the annual membership. In uh, this quarter's recipe bundle, I have a deli board that has a white fish spread that is to die for. Um, I also have a dessert board that's got a Nutella s'more dip, a banana cream pie dip, and uh, some other stuff. And then I've also taken my favorite ingredient, one of my favorite ingredients, pickles, and I've made three pickle recipes for you, including uh, dill pickle cheddar biscuits that are poofy and delicious and flaky. So go check out what is in uh, this quarter's Eat It by Hot For Food if you want more incredible stuff. And I'm gonna be doing this four times a year. Get yourself that annual membership there's lots of perks, lots of fun stuff going on. You'll always be in the know if you're the annual member. If you just buy the recipes, that's fine. If you just want the recipes, you don't wanna hear me, you don't want any of the fun discounts or any of the giveaways, you can buy just the recipes as well. So I hope you'll support me in this new endeavor. I'm very excited about it. It's me getting back to what I love doing the most, which is testing and developing recipes, taking great food photography, and just doing slightly less videos here on the YouTube channel. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a Mexican Fiesta board with three uh, super flavorful Mexican inspired dips. One is going to be a watermelon avocado salsa. The other is a smoky refried bean dip. And one of my favorites is the elote queso dip. Okay, so let's just get started because I really wanna make this. I can smell all the ingredients here. We're gonna make a watermelon avocado salsa. So instead of just your usual guacamole, which you could put on this board, of course, if that's what you want. But trust me when I say the juiciness, the flavors that come through when you combine just a few ingredients like watermelon, chopped avocado, red onion, lime juice, cilantro, and then our magic secret ingredient, the tahini seasoning. Now I've noticed that I don't think Canadians can get tahini. And so in the written recipe, I have uh, instructed how you can make your own version of this. It's just adding a few extra ingredients to the mix, but this really makes it pop. This is the secret ingredient to this salsa. Okay, so it's just a quarter cup of red onion. So this is just a piece I had in the fridge that I'll use up. And you really want a very fine, fine dice. I personally don't like big chunks of red onion in my mouth. All you do is combine everything into a bowl um, and you can make this a little bit in advance, but I wouldn't do it like the day before just cause the avocado won't be as uh, fresh. So do it like maybe a couple hours or an hour before you're gonna serve this. You're going a small dice on the avocado and the watermelon just so that this fits on a chip and it's not too, too chunky. 
I kind of cheated and I didn't buy a whole watermelon because I wasn't gonna eat all that myself. So I bought the stuff already prepared in a container. But you are gonna wanna cut this into the small uh, dice or the cubes, just like the avocado. Okay, so to this, you're just gonna add half of a lime juiced, a quarter cup of freshly chopped cilantro, and then two teaspoons of the tahini. And if you want, you can add finely chopped jalapeno. That would be a nice addition. I'm not going to add that because raw jalapeno is a little too spicy for my taste, but it would be a good addition. So gently fold this. You don't want to be mashing it together. Keep the integrity of the avocado in here. And obviously the juices and the sugar from the watermelon balance it out. You don't need to add salt because of the tahini. I personally like this salsa. I mean, you can eat it with plain corn chips if you like, but I like it with these vegan nacho chips just because I find the flavors go really well together. So I'm gonna throw these on the, the final board, but of course we have to do the taste test. You know, you can put this on like mango, pineapple, mm, watermelon, anything, even your avocado, your avocado toast. Mm, this would be amazing as avocado toast on like thick sourdough or even like rye bread or something. So good. Okay, we'll put this in the fridge until we're ready to plate everything up, but let's move on to the refried bean dip. The secret ingredient to this one are these dried ancho or pasilla peppers. Now these are pretty mild. If you want them to be a little spicier, don't de-seed. Uh, I'm gonna de-seed because I don't really like too, too spicy. You can also add um, additional chili powder if you want more spice, or you can use a slightly spicier pepper. But for me, you wanna look for these kind, even moritas are, are similar. Uh, these pruny dark peppers, I feel, are the best for this dip as opposed to the brighter red dried peppers. So the only thing you have to do is put these in a bowl or something and pour some warm water over them and let them soak until they're really, really soft. And then you can take the stem off and de-seed them. Now they're gonna float because they're light, so I just stick a spoon on top, make sure they're submerged in the water. It takes about 10 minutes. There's only a few ingredients, some chopped red onion, minced garlic, fire roasted canned tomatoes with the liquid, refried pinto beans, you could also use refried black beans, and then some smoked paprika. You're just gonna add about a teaspoon of olive oil or any kind of neutral oil. So just start by sauteing your onion and your garlic until it gets softened and fragrant. What makes this dip really easy is you're using refried beans in a can. I personally love all canned beans. Ain't nobody got time to soak their beans and cook them from scratch. So this already has spices and seasonings in it. So it does a lot of the work for you already. And that's really why I recommend doing this. We're gonna add some smoked paprika to this and just stir it around for about another minute. Add your fire roasted canned tomatoes and all the refried beans. That doesn't look too appetizing, but we're gonna go into a food processor with the chili peppers. So run this until it's mostly smooth, but you just wanna see still flecks of tomato and the chili peppers. See, it's a much nicer color now. So this is most likely warm enough to serve right away, but you could also reheat it for serving. And you could garnish with whatever you like, but I'm gonna put some vegan cheese on top and then just a little bit of chopped red onion and cilantro. We're gonna have all kinds of things on the final Mexican Fiesta board, but for the bean dip in particular, I liked the idea of dipping um, these mini bell peppers into it. It tastes really good. And the way to kind of plate this or display this is to cut these in half and then de-seed them. You can leave the stem on, but like this is so cute to like dip into the bean dip. Time to make the elote queso dip. Now this is probably my favorite of the three dips. They're all delicious in different ways, but this one is sort of really addicting. I also am a huge corn freak. I love corn uh, in any capacity, but this is my favorite way to do anything with corn and that's charring it in a cast iron pan like this. You've seen me do this for a number of different recipes, uh, including one of the recipes, my charred corn salad in my new cookbook, Hot for Food All Day 
little plug. Now it doesn't matter if your corn is straight out the freezer frozen or if you thawed it or if it's, um, well I prefer to use this corn instead of off the husk, but you could do that too. So you wanna get your pan really nice and hot, you're on like a medium high, then you're just gonna lay this down into an even layer. Obviously every kernel isn't touching the heat right now, so when you do toss this only once or twice, then you'll get all the kernels nice and charred. So don't touch this for about seven minutes. So check this out. You wanna start getting this color. In fact, we could have gone even longer, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going. Add just a teaspoon of avocado or canola. And then toss it again, and then just let it sit to char again. Don't stir it around too much. It's getting there, but we're gonna go just a little longer because the color is where the flavor comes from in this. And you really wanna get it kind of blackened and charred, not just lightly charred. Pan's extremely hot. Move it down to low heat right now. And what we're gonna do is portion out one cup of this. Because this we will fold into the dip after it's blended. To this pan, we're gonna add some seasonings like garlic, onion powder, smoked paprika, and chili powder, and just get it a little more flavorful. And this will be the portion that we blend in the food processor with some other things. Toss for a few minutes. You wanna cook the garlic a bit. This only takes a minute, so turn the pan off, and then to get it to cool faster, separate this mixture to a second plate and let it cool off as well. Okay, this doesn't have to be cold by any means, as long as it's not hot, so just like you could touch it and it's not gonna burn you. This goes in the food processor. All right, I'm using a store-bought vegan sour cream. This one, this is not sponsored, but I just tried this for this dip and it's perfect for it because it's very tangy. So if you can find this forager sour cream, it's good. If you're gonna use a brand like Tofuti or another kind, you may need to add just like more lime juice because it's definitely not as tangy as this one. We're gonna add pickled jalapenos and then about a quarter of a cup of cilantro. You can just throw in a handful. Half of a lime squeeze, and again, add more after if you're using a different brand of sour cream. We'll add a teaspoon of salt. Another secret ingredient to this dip that makes it extra tasty is a vegan substitute for cotija cheese. Now, I'm gonna use the Follow Your Heart Feta Crumbles because it's basically very similar. I think feta and cotija are pretty much the same, but feta is from uh, sheep's milk and katias from cow's milk, but we're eating vegan, so it doesn't matter. Also, just add a pinch of uh, ground black pepper. You can add more to taste if you want at the end. So now you'll just pulse blend this. It'll still have some texture because we're doing it at a food processor, not a blender, and that's what I prefer for these dips, that they have texture and they're not super smooth. Okay, so I just take the blade out and then I fold in that other roasted corn or the charred corn that we set aside before. Now this is just gonna make it really corny and very elote tasting. This one is so good. This one excites me. I'm just adding a bit more ground pepper. All right, now you can put this in a dish, top it with a little more of your cheese and a little bit of chopped cilantro. And now we can put together our whole Mexican Fiesta board. Look at this scrumptious, epic Mexican Fiesta board. It's loaded. Um, I don't normally make boards. I think I've done it like once, but not this elaborate. So this is uh, really fun to do. It's perfect for a party. It's really easy to do and you can just have fun and put different things that you want on this. This is just what I like to eat. Um, especially these frozen uh, taquitos, they're the Starlight brand. If you can get them in the frozen section, they're amazing. There's uh, vegan beef, vegan chicken. And these just sort of add a little bit of comfort food flair to the board, my favorite thing. So I just did them in a shallow deep fry. And these are so good with the elote queso.
That stuff is so good. I know I already said that. I even ate the leftovers from the first time I made this. So I put tortillas, and then I put bean dip, corn dip, fresh lettuce, fresh cilantro, fresh onion, um, and just ate it like a taco like that. Uh, again, you could do watermelon salsa and corn dip. They actually all really go well together. So just watch for people double dipping. I'm using my taquito as a little uh, spoon. <laughs> Watermelon avocado. It's just such a nice, um, it's almost like a palate cleanser. It's like you can eat the bean, you can eat the corn, and then go in for the watermelon avocado. Total palate cleanser. And then the bean dip, it can be like piping hot or it can be kind of room temperature. Either or, it's still delicious. Mine's more room temperature now because it's been sitting around. Mmm. Or on the taquito. So good. You know what else would go good with this? If you want four dips, my hot for food nacho cheese, of course. The famous nacho cheese. Mmm. All these recipes are on hotforfoodblog.com for free. Available to you right now, of course. Let me finish chewing. But this Mexican Fiesta board and these three recipes are available to you in order to celebrate the launch of my membership. Uh, program or platform called Eat It by Hot for Food. Go check the link below. So I appreciate it if you sign up. Welcome aboard to my new little project. It's not a little project. It's a big project. There was a lot of behind the scenes logistical technical things involved because instead of going with Patreon or something like that, I built my own platform myself so that I could own it on my own domain. So I just felt like that was the kind of best option in terms of like being business savvy. But anyways, if you have any other questions, please leave them below and I will be answering you. Uh, and I will still be here on YouTube once in a while with brand new content as well. So still subscribe, still check back. I have a whole archive of stuff, lots of vegan recipes, mainly comfort food. So definitely do a dig through the Hot For Food YouTube channel um, archives. Plus I've got my own channel, Lauren in Real Life, and I'm still gonna be posting what I ate in a day stuff, travel stuff, when it's safe to travel again. Um, so definitely subscribe and tune in over there as well. And just a couple more plugs. I, I've been posting more reels and TikToks of Snickle. So he has his own TikTok. And then Hot For Food Blog has a TikTok. And I'm trying to like put content up there as well. So give me a follow if that's your platform. It's not totally my platform, but I'm giving it my, my best shot. Um, so thanks for being along on the adventures. If you've been here from the beginning of Hot For Food, thank you. It's been quite an adventure and I'm excited to start kind of some new things over here and uh, come along for the ride. I'm gonna keep eating. I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.